Hi, this is Will with Spiritual Clarity. Today's video is about an abundance mindset. I had a question from a client and wanted to dig in on a video. I also asked this client a question, a follow up question, so I'm going to make this a two part, maybe even a three part video series. So it's about moving from scarcity mindset into abundance mindset and what, what do I think about that? So the question as she asked it was, uh, I was working on the homework today, homework that I gave her, and I hit some stuff related to scarcity mindset being passed down to me. We'll get into what that energy twitch was. Do you have any tips for working towards an abundance mindset? I did some energy pulling and intention setting, and that felt good, but wondering if you have any practices for this. So first to explain a couple things, uh, the twitching that I did was because there's a heavy energy on that first thing that, thing that she said about things being passed down that have her be stuck in a, a scarcity mindset. We'll address those in a minute. Energy pulling is a practice that I teach all of my private clients and my group clients. I've got some videos on it as well, so you can always ask more about that. And then intention setting. Obviously, we all have our own unique ways of doing that. So the question that I asked her as a follow-up was, you know, what will an abundance mindset get you? If you had an abundance mindset or more of an abundance mindset, would you have more confidence? Is it just about money? Would you have more money? Or would it be peace in your heart? And that's the question I'd ask you as well. You know, why do you want an abundance mindset? Ouch. Wow. <laughs> oh, some energy on that. Okay. So what comes up on that, that I can feel it, even though I'm just recording this video on my own, there's no one here live, but I can kind of tap into people that will watch this in the future, <clears throat> is we've had a pass down and drilled into our heads from guru after guru and teacher after teacher that you've got to have an abundance mindset. You have to have an abundance mindset. But then it's so many times that oh, I don't even know what that means anymore. It's kind of like the word authentic, you know? Oh, you've got to be authentic. I don't, it's lost. Authenticity has lost its meaning. I don't even know what the word means anymore. I do still use the word authentic sometimes, but I, I hope you catch my drift. So the beginning is, ow, the story, ow. The story that you have to have an abundance mindset. Would you be willing to step out of that at the point of creation? <sighs> hmm. There's so much on that. Um, the belief that an abundance mindset is better than a scarcity mindset. Would you be willing to destroy that belief at the point of creation? If you have no idea what I'm doing with these questions or what you're supposed to say, I'd encourage you to go back to some earlier videos. But basically, you want to say yes or no. And if you say yes, then that belief clears, the energy clears. <clears throat> if you say no, you get to keep it and hold on to it. I don't know why you would want to. And also, when you say yes, you've got to check in on your willingness to actually clear it. So if you say yes and you check in on your energy and you go, oh, no, I was actually a no on that. Get curious about that. Look into it. Uh, either chat with me in a private session or in a group session or on your own. Just do a you know five minutes of journaling or go for a walk and, and look at, hmm, why did I hold back on that? What's what am I what is that keeping safe? Or where am I afraid to expand? Or what am I afraid might happen if I do let that go? Um, just a couple quick thoughts of if you notice yourself holding back. Okay. So I'm rereading this book. It's a wonderful book called Learned Optimism. It's all about the, the beginning of when they first learned about uh, truly a victim mentality of the psychological impact of depression and pessimism and how it's all related. And Martin Seligman uh, wrote the book. And there's this amazing chapter where he talks about the benefits of pessimism. So after this entire book of outlining how optimism wins and it's better for your health and your mood and your income and your career and your relationships and everything, he dedicates a whole chapter to pessimism and how it's actually really important and it's crucial. And you don't want your pilot to be an optimist. You want your pilot to actually be a pessimist. You, <laughs> you want him or her to say, uh, yeah, I don't think we have enough gas to make it. You know, you don't want your pilot to say, mm, no, we probably have enough. I believe we can do it. We can do it. You don't want that. Uh, you want your surgeon to have at least a good balance. You know, you want them to have the confidence and optimism to, to take on challenges, but not so optimistic that they're ignorant of the reality. They find in studies over and over again that depressed people are more accurate about reality than optimistic people. 
So they both have their place. It's the same with abundance mindset versus scarcity mindset. Most of the time, sure, you want to have an abundance mindset. But for example, if you are a healer, coach, or therapist, as many of my clients are, <clears throat> or a lot of the people that watch my videos, and you have an abundance mindset, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. But the topic is, you know, taking on uh, private clients when you've only done group sessions, or vice versa. Or, you know, you're new to your practice and you haven't done a lot of work with private clients. So you don't actually know that you can help produce specific results. But because of some coach or mentor or group program that you're taking, they say, well, you've got to have an abundance mindset. Charge $5,000, put together a group program, have an abundance mindset. Oh, oh, it's gross. Oh, I hate that. It just, it, yeah, it's just everything that's wrong with our personal development, spiritual de development industry is that kind of thinking. So an abundance mindset isn't always better. Sometimes it's a lie. Sometimes it's just inaccurate. What might be more accurate would be to say, you know, if you're in a sales conversation, for example, so Mr. Potential Client, Mrs. Potential Client, uh, I've been doing this work for about two years, and I've worked with a lot of people in, in solo sessions. It's gone really, really well, and I've helped with, I don't know, let's pick an example. I've helped with uh, lower back pain and knee and knee pain. It's been really, really successful. You've got neck pain. I'm pretty sure that what I do is going to really help you, but I don't know for certain. So what I'd like to do is book two or three sessions, see if we make some progress, and if we do, then we'll look at a bigger package of three months or six months or whatever I feel might be a good a good suggestion. How does that feel to you? That would be a scarcity mindset. Whereas saying, oh, you, you've got neck pain, but it's the exact same thing, even though you don't actually know. So we're just, I, I really recommend the, the, the $5,000 package. Your, your whole inner being is screaming at you for a reason. So that's one, one example of where scarcity mindset could be helpful. Now, the last piece that I want to touch on is the very first thing that came up, with, which was in this person's question when they said, uh, I hit on some stuff related to scarcity mindset being passed, ow, being passed down to me. I can't even get the words out. <sighs> Whew. So often we have things from our family that's passed down from a past generation, from a, could be a past life, could be an alternate uh, universe or dimension. I don't really care where it comes from. I don't actually know for certain where it comes from. In my work and practice, I see flashes of things. So for this person, uh, I actually see a Jewish past life. Uh, I see, and, and not just Jewish, but even like the Great Depression or even uh, maybe, the, and maybe the Jewish ghetto during the war, Second World War. I get a lot of like that kind of, you know, 1940s style clothing. Am I right? I don't know. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. But what... I <laughs> such confidence I know but what I do, what I do know for certain is that there are beliefs and energies around scarcity that are passed down that may no longer apply now <clears throat> they might but they might not ow so for you watching this video and for this person who I'm making this video for all the whoo -hoo, let me make sure I'm getting the words right here <sighs> here we go all the ways that you are replaying energetic patterns from a past that may no longer apply, would you be willing to destroy that at the point of creation? And would you be willing to trust yourself to know when, when that pattern is applicable and when it is not? And anything that doesn't allow that, would you be willing to destroy that at the point of creation? Okay, <laughs> so a quick reminder, come back to, if, if you didn't already write down, what does an abundance mindset actually mean to you? Why would you want it? Is it to have, like I said, is it more confidence or would you like more money or is it peace in your heart? What will that abundance mindset get you? Write that down and when I hear the answer from this client, I'll make a follow-up video and we'll see where we land after that. So again, my name is Will Carlos uh, with Spiritual Clarity. Thank you for tuning in. If you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so. And yeah, I look forward to our next video. See you soon. Bye-bye for now.